We made it through the pandemic thanks to Pfizer and Moderna for providing a vaccine here in the United States. These pharmaceutical companies obviously showed their value to the world by providing a vaccine that got us out of that pandemic. In today's video, I'm going to cover Pfizer. It's a company that just announced their earnings, and I've got some fresh data to update my analysis. My name is Victor. I have an MBA, a lot of business experience, and I like recording videos on the companies that I analyze to consider investing in their stock. Do me a big favor and like this video. Consider subscribing to my channel if you like content like this. Let me tell you about Pfizer. I use a scorecard to look at each investment that I make to make sure I'm making a good investment. There's four questions followed by a decision whether I want to buy additional shares, just hold my shares, or sell shares. First, is this a company I want to be a part owner in? Do I like the industry? Do I think the management team is doing a good job operating the company? Is the balance sheet in good shape? Therefore, debt is less than three times EBITDA. And am I getting a discount on the stock? That way I could see my investment go up over time. Based on the answer to those questions, I decide whether I'm going to buy, hold, or sell. Pfizer is a longstanding, successful pharmaceutical company. They've developed a lot of drugs that fight cancers and other illnesses and diseases that people have. They came to fame here the last couple of years because uh, they formulated a vaccine for COVID. And that's actually one of the vaccines that I took. So uh, they really are of great value. They have good barriers of entry into their company because they have these drugs that they have patents on that they can sell that people really need to cure the, the diseases they have. I really like pharmaceutical companies. I like the dividends they pay. I like that they have barriers of entry. I like the industry for those reasons. Therefore, I like both the company and I like the industry. Pfizer announced their earnings. And one thing you got to keep in mind is that in 2021 and 2022, the vaccine sales for COVID just through the roof. And it's a very big positive in my book. They generated over $50 billion of free cash in addition to what they were uh, currently have. So they put that cash on the balance sheet and really stocked it up to do acquisitions and to uh, develop new drugs. But what makes it difficult for, I guess, the, the investor is that there's a big drop in sales because COVID went away. Big drop in overall profitability because COVID went away. Earnings per share is also a non-COVID uh, metric that, that you got to compare. But let's take a look at the numbers and try to assess how they're doing. So first, again, revenues are down significantly. It's because of COVID. And also, they have two drugs that are going off patent. Therefore, revenues are dropping in that area. Their earnings per share number went down, but I would say that they're still profitable. This company is still generating free cash. We just have to you know, get COVID numbers out of the out of the numbers and really compare the company before COVID versus after COVID. One thing that Pfizer has is it has a higher risk pro profile and a higher reward profile because they're developing a lot of new drugs that they believe people need, uh, drugs that fight cancers and other diseases. Now those drugs are beginning to get sold in this uh, particular year. And toward the back half of the year, you're gonna see some of the drug sales come in for the new drugs. They also have invested in CGen, which is a company they acquired. And this is specifically, it fights a, a variety of cancers. And they expect that this acquisition is gonna produce $25 billion of revenue by 2030. So looking at Pfizer's long-term growth projection, it's really there. If uh, mo you know many of these drugs are successful, and the CGEN acquisition is successful, this stock could really double, triple over the next five years. So that is exciting, but it does add risk to this particular stock because if the drugs fail that they develop, it's a big loss. Or if the CGEN acquisition doesn't really work, again, it's a big loss. So that's what you got to weigh in this particular company. One thing that's not working with Pfizer is that the company's stock is down year to date about 30%. But one thing that I look at is how are they doing against their peers? And if you look at other pharmaceutical companies, it just seems like all pharmaceutical companies are down this year, which is interesting. Big tech is up big time, but pharmaceutical is down and so is healthcare. So all, all boats are kind of dropped because I guess the receding tide drops all boats. 
Um, but I would say that Pfizer stock is down more than its peers. J and J is pretty stable, just down two percent. Merck is only down four percent, and Bristol Myers Squid is down fifteen percent. The balance sheet for Pfizer is in really good shape. It's one point one two ratio debt to EBITDA. So they've got plenty of cash and they've got plenty of EBITDA to pay off debt. Cash flows are doing good. They, they decreased, again, non-COVID uh, revenues decreased, cash flow decreased, but it's still positive. So the company still generates great free cash flows and pays that high dividend. I'm going to value what I think the stock price ought to be for Pfizer. And I believe that there's a 48% discount available on Pfizer. How did I get to that number? I look at free cash flows that the company is going to produce and try to discount those free cash flows to today's dollars. I also look at the earnings per share and try to value that based on the earnings per share they're producing and where that value stands. Let's hit free cash flows first. I'm looking at the free cash flows of 2022, and I'm only going to take 55%. That would take the COVID cash flow out of the equation. And I have a starting point of $14.3 billion. I'm going to grow that at 5%. They have new drugs coming online and so forth. So that's going to grow over 5% in my opinion. Long-term growth, 4%. So all the future cash flows in the future after year four are $426 billion for this company. I'm going to discount at 8%, which is the weighted average cost of capital. They have very little debt, very good risk profile for this company. The current value of all free cash flows in the future, $341 billion. I'm going to add the free the, the cash on the balance sheet and take away debt on the balance sheet and get to an equity value of $325 billion. The market cap currently is $207 billion. And the stock price has, based on the free cash flow method, it has a discount of 58% based on the discounted free cash flow method. Looking at earnings per share, it's expected they're going to have earnings per share of $3.35. A PE of 16 is very appropriate for this company. It could be higher because pharmaceutical companies could have a higher PE. Based on those factors, the earnings per share method gives us a 27% discount on the stock. I combine the two and I put more weight on free cash flows. I take two parts free cash flow method, one part earnings per share method. And that's where I got the 48% discount available on Pfizer. Doing my homework on what I think the, the company is valued and then watching the stock over time is a big opportunity. The stock, I believe, is worth $54.17. Uh, but the market is pricing the stock at $36 uh, per share. So if I'm right, I've got a lot of upside. Plus, I'm getting paid a dividend of 4.5%. And that's the homework that I do so that I could make a decision on buying stocks. It really pays off when, you know, the value does come to uh, reach what the free cash flows uh, tell us companies worth, as well as the earnings per share. And this is uh, looking like a good opportunity to buy into Pfizer since there is upside potential and I get paid that dividend uh, for, for investing in the stock. So let's revisit the scorecard. I do want to be an owner in Pfizer. I like pharmaceutical. I like holding pharmaceutical companies in my portfolio. The management team is doing a great job. They did a great job executing on COVID, and they're doing a really good job looking at uh, new drugs that they're exploring, as well as that CGen acquisition. Debt is well below three times EBITDA. There's a really good discount available on, on Pfizer. So I'm buying more shares. In fact, I bought more shares yesterday's in yesterday's trading, and uh, glad I did. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. Do me a big favor and like the video. Consider subscribing to watch more videos like this. And good luck investing in 2023.